Hey, welcome back to another edition of Humble Theology. My name is John, and we're looking at the book of Revelation. Chapter 7 is where we're at right now. And let's just read it first. It says, After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, and with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Simon, some say, Levi, uh, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin, so 12,000 of each. Uh, verse 9, after this I looked and behold a great multiple, blah, multiple, and multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes, peoples, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressing me, uh, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So in this look at Revelations chapter 7, we actually are kind of taking a pause. If you remember or go back and view chapter 6, uh, we had of the scroll being open, the scroll outlining the end of days, the last days, the, the coming of the Lord. And he only opened seals one through six. So we still haven't opened the seventh seal yet. That'll come next week, chapter eight. So right now in chapter seven, what's happening is kind of like an interlude or in movie terminology, we'd maybe call it a flashback. Um, you know, you watch uh, a show or something, and although it's progressing in sequence, there's a pause taken, you know, you get that fuzzy view or static -y thing, and, and you flash back to an earlier time. Or uh, we've used the movie reference before of The Avengers. If you've watched that long series, it's several different movies, but they're not always exactly in sequence. Or in some cases, you get a movie, and it ends up being backstory to a character. But it came out after certain issues and things about that character have already taken place in the larger scope. So that's what we're having here in Chapter 7, in my opinion. Uh, kind of a reform, covenantal, amillennial position, if you want to look at it that way. Is that when John uses this language of, after this I saw... It's not a timeline of events. It's not one event, and then I saw this, and then I saw this, as if they're going to happen in that order. It's the order in which he's being shown things, but not necessarily the exact order in which they occur. So we kind of have a repeat of images here. We have the angels holding back the destruction of the earth until the elect of God are sealed. Um, this perfect number, this uh, 144,000, uh, 12,000 from each tribe. Some say the 12 times the 12 is, uh, uh, to get the 144 is if you take like the 12 apostles and then multiply that by the 12 tribes. And that's how you come up with 144. 
And then some people say, well, then why a thousand? Well, in that day and age, I mean, today we would say, you know, did you go to such and such event? Oh, yeah, there was like a million people there. So we just use that in as a general reference for a lot of people. It was really a lot of people. It was really full. Well, here the fullness, a lot of people, it was a thousand. You, know, you, you rarely went somewhere, a thousand people there. Wow, that's a big number. That's a lot of people. So a thousand times the 144, again, an idea of completeness. Um, other religions have run into trouble when they try to say, no, this is a literal 144,000 only of the tribes of Judah. And that's it. You know, and it's a, a perfect 12,000 from each tribe. So, uh, don't really think that would go with the, weather, with the rest of the imagery that John has. Because, um, again, after that, starting in verse 9, you have this great multitude that no one could number. Um, and clearly they're saved too. Uh, it, it says of them, you know, when he gets to verse 13 and 14 talking about, well, who are these people? Well, they're also, they're saved from out of the tribulation. Um, their robes washed white from the blood of the lamb. Um, so it, it's a multitude so great, but yet so perfect in number that you can only describe it as God has saved everybody he has intended to save. And when does this occur? Well, prior to this final destruction. Nobody gets left behind in God's counting of things. The end will come when the end comes, but yet everybody that God has intended to save will have been saved. Um, and, and because salvation, like I said, belongs to the Lord. It's his thing. Um, we have in, uh, well, verse 12 again, just not leaving there quite yet. Seven attributes mentioned for God that everyone's praising him in this throne room worship uh, event, worship service. Uh, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. You know, seven. Well, again, popular number with John, popular number throughout Revelations. Because, again, it's perfection. It's completeness. It's God's number. There, there's a, an idea being conveyed here in its symbolism and in its depiction of what's going on that we're to expect out of this. And um, uh, we have in you know, the Great Tribulation is mentioned in an amillennial perspective. This is ever since Jesus left, ever since he ascended into heaven in Acts, Till he returns. That's tribulation. We see wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, famines. These things have been around ever since then. And that's what we deal with. Now, what Revelation is pointing out is that those things will have an end. There will be a definite one day end to these things. But yet these things of a tribulation, the church has been saved out of these things time and time again. Uh, the church has all these people saved out of the tribulation. Well, is that just the people saved at the end? It's like, no, those are the people saved from when Jesus left until now that have been called up into heaven and had their sins washed in the blood of the Lamb. I mean, it's actually even since the beginning of time, when you know, after Adam fell, you know, the, the sins of the flood, uh, the, the plagues of Egypt. I mean, these things have been around all the time. We've always been waiting for the fulfillment and completion coming of God having brought in the very last person, and kind of like the ark, brought in the very last animal, and then God shuts them in. He's the one that closes the door and says, this is it, we're done, now it's the end. And so we kind of have that. Um, the church is fully redeemed. Uh, it shows itself to be purified. There's kind of a hint that the new heavens and new earth, where the, the lamb is in the throne uh, room of God, everyone bows down, everyone's worshiping. There's no more tears even, uh, no scorching heat. And right now in Texas, it's about 104 outside. Um, so yeah, no more heat, no more scorching of the sun on, on uh, the saved, on the elect, on these people of God saved from all times unto himself. So again, a brief throne room look, uh, chapter 8 next week, we'll open chap uh, the seventh seal, so to say. Um, we'll look at that there. So, But for now, thank you for joining uh, me in this discussion. Uh, if you have questions, comments, please feel free to leave them below. Share, like, subscribe, and we'll do this all again next time. Thank you so much. God bless.